Hello and welcome to another video brought to you by AllFreeJewelryMaking.com and KeepsakeCrafts.net. Today we're going to make this charm bracelet, but the different thing is we're going to make our own hammered charms out of wire. So to make this charm bracelet you will need some wire and this is 22 gauge craft wire. It comes in different colors. Um, you can certainly make it out of sterling, sterling silver wire, gold filled wire, but if you're just learning how to wire wrap and work with wire, it's a good idea to start with something a little bit less expensive like this craft wire. You'll also need some chain to put your charms on and a clasp and a jump ring. For tools, you'll need chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, some wire cutters, and for the, um, the hammering, you'll need something, a bench block, isn't this the cutest thing? I just love this little anvil. Something that you can pound on and something to pound with, like a craft hammer. And we're going to start working right off the spool. This will save us from having any waste. And the first thing you want to do is to start to form your first spiral by grabbing the end of the wire with the very tips of your round nose pliers and giving it a twist. And we're going to try to make this center of the spiral nice and small and tight. So give that a twist and then once you have it started you can come in with your chain nose pliers and tighten that up. so that we have a nice tight center. And then go ahead and hold on to that, the flat uh, part of the loop, and start forming your spiral. And just hold the wire in one hand and the chain nose pliers in the other, and just start twisting around. And of course how big the spiral is, how big your heart charm is, all depends on your personal taste. Like I said, I'm using 22 gauge wire. I wouldn't really go any finer than that. You could certainly use heavier wire. 16 gauge would make some nice chunky hearts. But don't go much finer than 22 because it just won't hold its shape. So I've got a few spirals and now I'm going to, you know, I'll maybe go one more time around. When, once you get it started, you can use your fingers. And now I'm going to loose, leave a loose bit right here. That will give a place for my jump ring to go through so that I can dangle my charm from a piece of jewelry. And then switch back to your round nose pliers and hold on to your heart right where you want the bend to be for the loop. Um, well, for the, the bottom point of the heart. And go ahead and grab your wire and wrap it around the round part of your round nose pliers. And that makes that bottom point and a little bit of a loop. And then here, uh, we do a little bit of guesswork as far as how long we want to cut this piece. It depends on how big you've made your first spiral and how, um, but for this one, I'm going to cut this about, oh, inch and a half, two inches from the end. I kind of like the second one to be a little bit smaller. So I think two, a little more than two inches will make it the same. I haven't actually measured that. I probably should. But then just go ahead and repeat uh, how we started our first loop with the chain nose pliers. Go in with the, I mean with the round nose pliers to start the loop. Then go in with the chain nose to tighten it up and start spiraling again. I've often found when I use the chain nose pliers that it's easier to get a nice tight loop. And when I switch to my fingers, often the, uh, the loops get looser. So it depends on the look you want. And there we go. Isn't that the cutest thing? Let me hold that a little closer so you 
can see it. Our own little handmade, hand-formed heart charms, each one unique. So once you've made your little heart charm out of your wire, you can certainly leave it like this, but what I like to do, and I think the look is just much more interesting, is to hammer it. You can buy bench blocks, which are just flat pieces of metal that you can pound on. And actually, I'm going to move this cushioned thing out of the way so that I have a more stable surface to pound on. And I'm going to start with the flat side of the hammer. And you'll see it doesn't take a lot of force. You don't have to beat on it severely. You just pound it till it's flat. Now you'll notice that the heart, as I pound on it, is changing shape. Wherever the wires overlap each other, be careful not to pound there. You will severely weaken the metal. In fact, where this crisscross is down here, I'm going to put that right off the edge and just pound right up to that point. And I like to just hold it with my hands. I feel like I have a bit more flexibility. You can certainly hold it with a pair of chain nose pliers. And then once you have it sufficiently flattened, if you like the look, which I do, you can use the rounded end just to add some texture and give it that hammered look. Keep in mind, whenever you work metal, you're changing, believe it or not, you are changing the molecular structure of it. And it is becoming more brittle as you do this. So don't overwork it. Do it just enough to get it to where you want it. Uh, for the flattening, it doesn't really matter which side, but notice when you do the texturing, you're going to have to flip it over and texture both sides. Like I said, don't overdo this part. Just get it to the point where you want it. Try to be careful of crossing parts. Sometimes this, these spirals will start to overlap or sometimes they'll spread. Uh, but just don't, don't pound them if they're overlapping. Pull them apart. You can reshape it afterwards. You can reshape this whole thing still and make it just the way you want it. So there we are. Okay, you see I've brought back in my little mat so things won't move around. And you are going to need five of these heart charms. Keep in mind, you could make just two and make them into a pair of earrings. You could make one, use a heavier gauge wire and make it a necklace pendant. So, I didn't, I forgot about this in the um, beginning. You'll also need a jump ring for each charm that you're going to put on your bracelet. So you use chain nose pliers to open your jump rings by putting the split at 12 o'clock and twisting it open. Go ahead and slide the jump ring onto one of your charms and I'm going to just start right about in the middle of my bracelet. Close up the jump ring. Sorry, my other um, chain nose pliers have gone walkabout, so I'm just using my fingers right now. So you just do that to attach all of them to your bracelet, and then attach your clasp with a jump ring to the end, and you have a great charm bracelet with charms you made yourself. So here's another look at our finished bracelet. Please be sure to check out KeepsakeCraft.net for more jewelry and crafting ideas and inspiration. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good one.